We are going to begin on our snowy mountain painting here in the sky as we generally do with our large round-headed brush, a mixture of primary blue and titanium white. I'm moving the paint here around as you can see in a scraping motion because I want the paint to be fairly thin so that when we layer mountains on top of it, the colors from the mountains don't blend too much in with our blue sky. So with that in mind, I'm having a little bit of additional water on the brush just to ensure that the paint moves around and remains viscous enough without being too dense. From there, I'm taking a little bit of black or gray and I'm adding that into the mix. Then around the edges, I'm creating very, very subtle clouds. Generally, when we go to render clouds as beginners, we make them fairly stark. They're either extremely bright or very dark, but generally, in real life, they're fairly close to the actual color of the sky and should be much more subtle. I'm also doing different types of clouds. As you can see, there are two streaks of clouds and there's a third. And then there's also these larger looming ones around the edges. This diversity is really going to add a lot of interest to the piece and it kind of frames the painting nicely as well. We're always talking about creating vignettes and making the edges a little bit darker and you can do that with clouds as well. Here I'm showing you a more extreme example of that. We're taking even more of that gray paint and I'm blending that in yet again around the edges. I'm using a lot of tapping motions just to ensure that I get a fairly nice, subtle, soft gradient and it doesn't look streaky. I'd much rather a tapped aesthetic on the clouds as opposed to a streaky aesthetic. And a round brush really helps with that because of course it doesn't have any sharp edges. Now from there, I'm liking the way this is looking and I'm going to begin on the mountains themselves. I'm going to begin in the far distance with a medium sized square headed brush and I'm creating the edges first. This is while I have a lot of paint on my brush and I know I can render a very sharp consistent line. You want to ensure that your mountains don't have a lot of breaks in them, right? We don't want it to look too gritty along the edge. We want something to ensure that it looks sharp, but we don't want it to look soft either. So that's what I'm doing and then I'm bringing the paint downwards. I'm also using a very neutral gray to begin with. I'm leaving my very stark colors like black and white for the foreground where I want my viewer's attention to be. We generally want to put this softer, less saturated colors in the background and this is really going to help with our depth. From there, I'm taking the same blue that I used in the sky with the large round headed brush and moving around the bottom portions of my mountains. This is creating a very soft aesthetic. It's implying a lot of mist, fog or clouds. It's kind of just moving and rolling through the base of all of these mountains. And we're ensuring that the top of the mountains remain very sharp while the bottoms blend up nicely. It doesn't have to be a perfect gradient because of course these clouds, this mist, whatever it may be, can be different, right? And diversity is so important when painting landscapes. So from there, I'm now taking that same medium sized square headed brush and I'm beginning to work on the mountains in the foreground. I'm taking a very dark gray. It's not a pure black. It's a mixture of titanium white and black. And I'm, again, I'm creating the tops of my mountains, then blending downwards. As you can see at the bottom of the mountains, it gets very gritty. It might get a little bit softer. And that's why you want to ensure that you're starting with the sharper areas, with the edges, so that they can be as stark as they need to be. I'm then taking a little bit of this dark color and moving it into the middle ground because I do want a proper transition. I want something very stark, I want something in a middle tone, and I want something very soft in the background. This progression, again, is going to add to the depth of the painting. So right now, the mountains are looking extremely simple. They don't have any detail, and that is just fine. I'm just creating the basic base colors first, 
and ensuring that I get all of my values and depth correct. Once all of this is done, then we can go and move into the actual detail work. But we need to ensure that our foundation of the painting is correct first. Another little thing you can do that I didn't do is make the fog in the foreground a little bit brighter. So with that being said, I'm going back again into my mountains. This time I'm working on the darker side, which means I'm going to use a bit of a darker pigment. Again, I'm not using a pure black. I'm starting on the edges and I'm blending downwards. As I get towards the fog, I'm going to be much more rough and I'm just going to kind of leave it in a rough state, let it dry and then come back and apply more fog over top of it because we're not going to be able to get the subtle blends we want right now with the color we have. We need to work on top of it with the lighter tones. So with that being said, I'm just continuing to apply the darker sides to my mountains. Much like the sky, I'm keeping the difference, uh, much like the sky and the clouds and all of that, um, I'm keeping the difference of colors and values fairly similar, but just different enough, right? Because again, it's not going to be that stark of a difference. So there we have all of that, and it is almost dry at this point. So I'm going to take my large brush as I did before, more of that sky blue, and I'm going to work it into the mountain just moving upwards. And this is going to create a much more natural transition. You kind of have these wispy clouds and fog all working its way in there as well. So we're finally starting to get a decent base for our painting. If you look at the clock, you notice that we spent the majority of the time building the base. That is important. Generally, the detail is the last 10-15% of the painting and it makes it all come together. But don't be discouraged if you're spending a lot of time building the base because it is so, so important. From there, I'm taking another medium-sized square-headed brush, some titanium white paint, and I'm very, very, very lightly applying the brush to my canvas. I'm using a very minimal amount of pressure and occasionally I'm dipping my hand off the canvas, then reapplying it, dipping it off, reapplying it. And this is going to create an inconsistency with the amount of white that's being applied with the amount that's being dragged onto the canvas. And you never want to actually blend it. You should be applying it at the um, softness level that you never are actually pushing the bristles into the canvas. You're essentially just letting the paint itself touch the canvas. And this is going to render this very gritty, inconsistent look, which most mountains have. Now, generally people do this with palette knives, but I've done tutorials with those in the past, and I know a lot of people simply don't have them. So I thought today we would do this with a brush, and you could see how I'm doing that. I'm also holding the brush on top, as opposed to the way we normally hold it, because that's going to help me apply less pressure and kind of have more control as well. So as you can see, I'm continuously going back and adding more. And that's because acrylic paints generally dry darker and they are slightly transparent. So when you're applying a light color over a dark color, you're going to need to do several layers. And that's completely natural. Again, it's not something to get discouraged with. Um, it's something that happens to all of us with pretty much all paint. So, by the way, <laughs> little thing, if you're looking for any of these tools, I have all of the brushes, the paints, all of that listed in the description for you, and it's all easy to find. So anyways, from there, I'm just continuing to add more additional highlights. I'm kind of creating little pathways, as you can see. I'm not bringing all of this white down consistently through the mountain. I am leaving openings. I'm ensuring that the rocks are all different, that, you know, over time, different portions have broken off, or, you know, there are different paths for people to climb up. You want to kind of give your painting a story, a history, right? This mountain's existed for just so, so long, and so much has happened to it. 
and that's reflected in the aesthetic. It shouldn't just be a simple triangle. It should have pieces that kind of fall off and all of that. So here again, I'm just adding more additional highlights as the paint dries, and here we're even moving it into the middle ground. We aren't going to have as much of a highlight in the middle ground, but it is important to include it as well as it will make a difference. I'm also throwing a little bit into the background, but I'm applying an even lighter touch, and I'm kind of dragging a little bit to ensure that we have a softer application. So if you know me, if you know this channel, I generally cheat a little bit. That's the painting after 10 minutes, but I wanted to show you a couple of extra steps. So here I'm applying a bit of a darker cloud in the upper left, just so the stark white of the mountain really shows up. And it's really just going to help it pop and bring the eye to where we want it. And then I'm just going to take that additional white and apply it up into the clouds. I don't generally work on the backgrounds at the end, but I thought we could do without disrupting the middle ground and foreground. So it's just something to tie it all in and make the piece a little bit more interesting. So there we have it, our full painting after about 13 or 14 minutes. I truly hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you'd like to learn more, there is a link in the description to my book, Acrylic Painting for Beginners. And of course, I post every Saturday. I hope to see you next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching, and above all, stay creative.